Hey, good evening, guys. I want to touch base on one of the questions we get asked uh, quite often with our tech guys up front is the differences between mild steel tubing and chrome alley. There's a lot of arguments out there on which one is better for, for this application or that application. But first of all, if it's going to be a 25.1 car or 25.2 car, it, uh, the chassis has to be 4130. So that's what the requirements for SFI call out. So they're, they're going to require that to be 4130 normalized tube. The differences between the two are chrome molly is a very strong tube in a, in a very thin wall. So mild steel in the same wall thickness would be a lot weaker tube. So for instance, if I'm doing a strut tube here out of inch and a half 065 in chrome molly, this is a very strong seamless tube. In mild steel, it's going to have a welded seam. In that same wall thickness, that tube would be very weak. Uh, so an inch and a half 065 mild steel would be a very flexible, very weak tube where 4130 is going to be much stouter for this type of application. So in a, if you're looking at a used car that, uh, that might be built out of mild steel, you know, it's going to be like, uh, it'll have like a 134 wall. So it'll be quite a bit thicker. So you're going to have a heavier, much heavier, uh, chassis than you would out of 4130. Um, once you get the cab specs done on a, on a 4130 car, the rest of the, the car, um, the specs for SFI are basically called out around the driver's cab in the, in the funny car cage area. But uh, you can use any size tubes um, forward and after that. So um, you get some guys arguing that, uh, you know, in an impact, uh, mild steel is much better. And to a certain extent, that is correct because mild steel is uh, so much softer than a chrome molly tube, it will actually bend and give where a lot of times, uh, let's say if you're, you're, you have a 4130 chassis and you take a glancing blow off the guardrail and hit the right front corner or left front corner, it will actually fracture some tubes, might even break some off um, where mild steel will just bend and kind of roll out of the way. So in that instance that, you know, that is a valid argument, but in any of the higher end cars, all those chassis are going to be 4130. We we don't even um, have a selection for anything mild steel here. We don't do any mild steel chassis, or we don't even have any mild steel tubing in the shop. Everything we have is 4130. But this stuff is all a military grade tube, which means that there's uh, when we get this uh, 4130 and it comes with uh, paperwork that grades it to a certain military spec, and uh, that's also required by SFI. And uh, so what it means is the tube has a, a very consistent thickness throughout, so it uh, has a much tighter tolerance than a mild steel tube would. That, that spec is, is required so that uh, there's some consistency in all these builds so that when, when this thing gets teched and sonic checked that the, um, the inspector will know what size tube it is and what wall thickness it is when he sonic checks it. So, Again, uh, everything we do is 4130, so it's, it's kind of hard to justify why you would do something out of Miles Deal. I don't think um, currently that it's really worth uh, building anything out of uh, mild steel tubing unless you're doing a, you might be doing a, a you know, weekend 990, 1090 car, something like that that you, that you might want to uh, bracket race with, then uh, a mild steel uh, cage in that would be just fine. But uh, again, that's, we get asked that a lot, so we wanted to clarify the differences in the tube and, and uh, what the pluses and, and minuses are both. So if you uh, have any questions or need to expand on that, any, just give us a call and we'll help you out.